Yeah, so your recording natin is already starting. So, uh, recap tayo. So this diagnostic test is about a cantilever beam na of which we need to determine the shear moment diagram of the given beam. At the same time, we need to compute the magnitude and location of the maximum flexural stress. If the beam has a rectangular cross section with base equal to 80 and depth of 180 millimeters respectively. At the same time, we need to determine the type and magnitude of the stress in a fiber 20 millimeters from the bottom of the beam at a section 2 meters from the free end. So in this case, ang first natin hahanapin for this particular problem is the shear and moment diagram of the given beam. So doon sa given beam natin, kung mapapansin natin, wait down. So kung i-drawing natin yung particular beam, meron tayong uh, fixed support doon sa dulo and then free end dito sa uh, end ng beam natin since, since this is a cantilever beam with a span of 3 meters. And at the same time, meron tayong uniformly distributed load doon sa beam natin all throughout na ang magnitude is around 5 kilonewton per meter. At the same time, meron din tayong given doon na concentrated load na 5 kilonewtons at a distance 1 meter from the fixed end and 2 meters from the free end. So, paano ba tayo magsistart muna ng shear and moment diagram with this one? So, for every problem na meron tayong shear and moment diagram, we need to at least start uh, solving for the reaction forces. So, Dito sa situation na to, since meron tayong cantilever beam, ano lang bang side yung may reaction force? Anyone who can answer? Saan lang tayo dapat may reaction force dito? Sa cantilever beam. Dito lang sa may fixed end ng cantilever beam. Ngayon, given na fixed end to and then free end yung isa, free end itong dulo, definitely wala tayong reaction dito sa side na to. So may nakita kong iba na nag-solve na may reaction dito sa free end. Wala po tayong reaction at the free end because wala tayong support to start with. So meaning to say kapag free end yan, wala tayong reaction force na dapat tingnan. Ang dapat lang natin titingnan ay yung reaction force doon sa fixed end. Ngayon, in terms of support conditions, i-review natin yung naging lecture natin before, meron tayong different support conditions, di ba? Meron tayong roller support, meron tayong hinge support, and meron tayong fixed support. Sa roller support, meron tayong degree of freedom na dalawa. Meron tayong two degrees of freedom because may freedom yung roller, may freedom yung roller natin to move sideways and may freedom yung roller support natin to rotate. Ang isang restriction lang ng roller support is to move vertically. So, ibig sabihin, vertical reaction lang ang consider natin kapag roller support. Ngayon, kapag hinge support naman meron tayo, ilang degrees of freedom meron tayo? Kapag roller support, di ba, may, may freedom ang support natin to rotate the member. The, old, the problem that we have in terms of uh, roller support is hindi pwede or meron tayong restrictions na mag-move laterally yung support natin. Therefore, meron tayong horizontal reaction. At the same time, hindi rin pwede mag-move vertically yung support natin. Therefore, meron tayong vertical reaction. So, meaning to say, meron tayong single reaction para sa roller support and sa hinge support, meron tayong two reactions. Now, sa fixed support, alam natin na kapag restrained yung beam, uh, it is restricted to move at any uh, given movement. So, meaning to say, wala siyang degree of freedom. Therefore, kailangan nating i-determine kung meron bang 
horizontal reaction at the same time meron bang vertical reaction and lastly yung bending moment na nagiinduce ng restraint sa rotation so meaning to say kung meron tayong fixed support meron tayong tatlong reactions na dapat i-consider therefore sa given na cantilever beam natin ilang reactions yung kailangan natin solve so meron tayong Three. Tatlo, di ba? Meron tayong vertic ay, horizontal reaction, meron tayong vertical reaction, and meron tayong moment reaction. So, it is important na makita muna natin kung ano yung dapat natin i-consider sa support condition before tayo mag-solve. At the same time, yung pagsasolve natin, pwede tayo mag-eliminate agad ng mga factors na kahit hindi natin isolve. Dito sa tatlong reaction forces natin, ano yung pwede natin ineglect agad? Horizontal. Yung horizontal reaction because wala naman din tayong horizontal force to begin with. So, ang dapat lang natin tingnan ay yung vertical reaction and yung moment reaction. Now, Kung mag tayo ng direction ng moment, titignan natin kung paano ba magro-rotate ngayon yung force. Or kahit hindi naman tayo mag ng tamang direction, just in case na maging negative yung final answer natin, ibig sabihin lang nun is mali tayo ng orientation ng sign. Or, or orientation ng direction rather. Yeah. So paano natin start, start solve to? So pwede natin i-take na alam natin na dito sa support mayroong existing moment. Therefore, hindi pwede natin sabihin na summation moment is equal to zero. Saan tayo po pwedeng humanap ngayon ng probable answer na pwede natin makuha yung either moment, reaction, or yung force at y. Pwede rin natin sabihin na yung let's say yung point na to is point A and then yung free end ay point B. Pwede rin natin namang sabihin na yung summation moment at A is equal to zero. Provided that meron tayo existing moment at point A. Para natin gagawin. Anything na may distance from point A would generate a moment. Diba? So meaning to say, yung 5 kilonewtons natin na force, nag-generate siya ng moment given na uh, it is 1 meter from Point A. At the same time, meron pa tayong, okay, take natin na uh, clockwise positive. At the same time, at the same direction, meron tayong 3 meters na 5 kilonewton per meter na uniformly distributed load. Now, para dito sa course natin sa RCD, wala tayong i-consider na varying load. Diba? Kapag may uniformly distributed load, meron tayong consider na uniform strip sa varying. Yung varying, ginagamit lang natin to kapag soil, tubig, or wind pressure. Ibig sabihin, kung soil, water, or wind pressure yan, consider natin as lateral yung force natin or yung pressure natin na maximum. Ito ngayon na uniformly distributed load would denote gravity. So kapag nag-analyze tayo ng beam sa subject natin ngayon, ang i-consider natin most of the time is gravity. Maglalateral force lang tayo. So gravity kapag beam Maglalateral forces lang tayo kung ang uh, kinoconsider natin ay hinahanap natin yung maximum load na environmental. So, depende dun sa tatlo kung ano yung may pinakamalaking pressure, yun yung kinoconsider natin. Na ita-translate natin as gravity load para masolve natin yung mga uh, material limits. So, yung environmental maximum load pwede natin i-consider yan kapag column na or footing yung dinedesign. Now, paano ngayon natin isosolve yung maximum na 
maximum na magnitude nito. So, meron tayong 5 kN per meter na uniformly distributed load na multiply lang natin doon sa corresponding distance or corresponding span kung hanggang saan lang siya. So, sa case natin, meron tayong 3 meters. Tapos sa ba tayo dyan? Hindi pa. Ang consider natin ay moment. Same time, this is only a magnitude of force. Para maging moment yan, we need to at least have a corresponding distance. Therefore, paano natin malalaman yung moment? Malalaman natin yung moment ng na-induced ng uh, uniformly distributed load if alam natin kung saan yung location ng 5 times 3 or yung 15 kilonewtons natin. So kapag uniformly distributed yung load natin, alam natin na ang resultant force ay nasa gitna. So this is, let's say, in kilonewton per meter, ang alam natin, nasa gitna ngayon, pupunta yung resultant. We're in, kapag varying naman yung load, alam natin na magpapass through doon sa centroid ng varying load natin yung concentrated load. We're in, meron tayong two-thirds distance mula doon sa toe, and then one-third ng distance mula doon sa heel. So alam natin, na nasa midpoint. Therefore, yung resultant na 15 ay nandoon sa distance 1.5 from either of the free end. Either of either free end or the uh, fixed support. So we need to say meron tayong 3 over Ngayon, itong dalawang to ay generated by the forces. Ano pang moment yung hindi natin nakakonsider? Kompleto na ba tayo dyan sa summation moment at 8? May kulang pa ba sa tingin nyo? Yes, sir. Ano yung kulang? Yung reaction po dun sa cantilever beam po sa fix. Yung moment po dun. So ang kulang na lang natin is yung moment at A or yung moment reaction no fixed end. Ngayon, given na clockwise positive yan, ang in natin nating direction for moment at A is counterclockwise. Therefore, this is negative sign. So equating, mayroon tayo makukuha na moment at A na equal to ilan. May calculator ba kayo ngayon? May hawak akong calculator, pero go lang. Mas okay na kayo muna yung nagsasabi ng sagot para at some point makakapagpindot kayo sa mga calculators niya. Okay, so ano yung sagot? Meron tayong moment at A na equal to ilan? Twenty-seven point five. So moment at A is twenty-seven point five kilonewton meter. So unang reaction palang yan. Next natin. Next na po pwede natin gawin is kukunin na ngayon natin yung vertical reaction. We need to say kung yung vertical reaction ang titignan natin, we need to get summation forces at 1. Or summation forces vertical is equal to 0. Say, the summation forces vertical, we just need to observe kung ano ba yung mga forces na available yung sabihin natin. Therefore, meron tayong 5 kN directed downward. Or kung downward lahat yan, um, titignan natin ay positive upward. So meron tayong Ry minus 5 minus 5 times 3. Therefore, yung reaction at Y natin is equal to 20 kilo 
yes, but... So far, yan pa lang naman yung mga kailangan natin for sex. So, alisin muna natin tong drawing na to. Ngayon, yung sa pagsasolve ng forces, makikita nyo rin kung ano ba yung mga directions na pwede natin i-assume given na may mga mas malalaking values or makikita nyo kung uh, at what direction ba yung ano natin, yung beam. So, kung i-recreate natin yung beam ulit natin, Meron tayong 6M at the same time, may mga magnitude tayo ng loads na five kN per meter for a span of 3 meters and a concentrated load of 5 kN. So, meron tayo 1 meter and 2 meters na distance. So, ngayon, nasolve natin yung reaction force. Pwede natin ngayon i-denote kung ano sila. So, meron tayong vertical reaction na 20 kN and meron tayong moment reaction na directed counterclockwise na 27.5. So, tama lang yung assumption ng direction natin because naging positive ngayon yung Result, yung resulting answer. Now, kung consider natin ngayon yan, kailangan lang muna natin kuhanin kung ano ba yung extent ng mga forces natin na available. At the same time, pwede na natin drawing ngayon yung shear and moment diagram. Now, kung magsastart tayo sa shear, ano ba yung mga dapat natin tingnan sa shear? Mga reaction. Anong klaseng reaction yung titignan natin? Yung force or moment? Force. Okay. So forces ang titignan natin kapag shear yung uh, kinoconsider natin. Ngayon sa shear, kung mapapansin natin, meron tayong sa start ng point A, meron tayong 20 kN up directed upward. So therefore, tataas tayo at a magnitude of 20. Now, Next natin, kung meron tayong available force doon sa next side natin, so ang shear diagram natin and moment diagram is from left to right. Meaning to say from 20, at some point 1 meter from the support, meron tayong magnitude na 5 kN per meter. Pero may 1 meter tayo na distance. So meaning to say, meron tayong 5 na natitira or may 5 tayong may 5 kN meter na existing or 5 kN na uniformly distributed load as resultant. So 5 meters natin is downward and yung 20 natin is positive. Therefore, this denotes na meron tayong negative na magnitude for shear. Yan na natin. Yan. So, meron tayong first degree na curve or ano ba yung first degree? Linear yung relationship niya, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong first degree line na pababa wherein ang resulting natin na stress is, ay force rather, is 15 kN. 20 minus 5 is 15. Now, aside from that, meron tayong 5 kN na pababa from this point. Therefore, yung 15 natin ay bababa ulit ng magnitude na 5 kN. Therefore, 10 na lang yung matitira natin dyan. So, after natin, wala na tayong force na existing between this point. Therefore, pwede na tayong mag-progress doon sa next few distances. Ngayon, sa next few distances na meron tayo, ang natitira na lang is yung 2 meters natin na distance at the same time na merong 5 kN per meter na magnitude. So alam natin at some point na this is 10 kN na resultant. 
So kung meron tayong 10 kilonewtons na resultant, magbabawas tayo ng 10 kilonewtons mula dito sa existing shear natin. So yung 10, bababa na ngayon siya at a rate na 10 minus 10, nag-close yung shear diagram natin to zero. So ang slope natin pa rin ay first degree or linear na line. Question with regards to shear diagram. Yeah. So ang nakita ko doon sa iba, nag-solve sila ng reaction dito sa point B. Hindi tayo maglalagay ng reaction at point B kasi restrained yung beam mo at one side. So anything lang na nakadrawing doon sa beam natin, wag na natin dadagdagan. Baga, anyway, kapag ilagyan mo pa ng reaction dito, indeterminate na yung structure mo. Meaning to say, hindi mo na masasolve yung uh, reactions ng beam mo by just using summation forces. Kung baga, kailangan mo na ng another way or another method para, guma, para makuha ngayon yung reaction forces. Yan, titingnan natin kung matuturo ko sa laboratory time natin. Okay? So, yung sa structural theory part, siguro yung double integration sa ka conjugate beam. Ayun, pwede kong maturo yun. Na at some point, makakapag-solve tayo ng mga indeterminate problems. So far, ito muna yung kailangan natin since uh, medyo late na rin nag-start yung semester. Okay? So, kung walang tanong dito sa shear, sa shear diagram, pwede na tayo mag-proceed ngayon doon sa moment. So, yung moment diagram would greatly depend on the shear diagram. Ngayon, one way na madaling gawin is to solve yung area ng shear diagram. Pero before tayo mag-solve ng area ng shear diagram, we need to consider muna from this point. So, di ba, magsa-start ka ng zero, mag-end ka rin ng zero. Yun ang goal natin sa shear moment diagram. So, from start point na meron tayong zero, meron ba tayong existing moment at point A? Meron. Yung 27.5 na counterclockwise. Kung counterclockwise yan, inasume natin na ang counterclockwise ay downward or negative. Meaning to say, meron tayong negative 27.5 na existing. Now, para masolve natin, Yung shear ay yung moment na quantified dito sa next point natin. Ang kailangan nating hanapin is itong area ng trapezoid. So, titingnan natin at some point 1 meter from the support. And then, may 2 meters distance pa. Yung 1 meter from support, kailangan natin ngayon mahanap yung area itong particular shear diagram to. So at 1 meter, meron tayo magnitude 20 and 15 as maximum values. So big sabihin, yung area nyan, meron tayong uh, so area ng shear diagram, meron tayong 20 plus 15 over 2 times 1. Diba? So, B1 plus B2 over 2 multiplied by uh, height. Ganun lang ang ano natin. So, yung area ng shear natin is equal to ilan? 20 plus 15 divided by 2 times 1. Meron tayong? 17.5. So, 70.5 kilonewton meter. So, since nasa taas siya, positive na yun yung uh, area natin. So, aangat tayo ngayon ng 17.5. So, 27.5 minus 17.5 is equal to 10. Diba? So, negative 10. Ngayon, ano yung magiging uh, slope natin para doon sa moment diagram. Kung first degree yung shear diagram natin, anong na ngayon dapat yung magiging resulting slope 
for the moment diagram. Curve po. Curve. Anong klaseng curve? So, alam natin na ang curve niya ay parang spandrel, pero anong degree ngayon ang kinoconsider natin para dito sa moment diagram? Second degree. Okay. Second degree. So, take note na any uh, any uh, moment diagram, yung slope ng moment diagram natin would always be a degree higher than the shear diagram. Now, punta tayo dito sa next. Yung area ng shear natin ngayon for this particular span, so, meron tayong triangular area for the shear from the shear diagram. Pwede natin sabihin na yung area for shear is equal to the base times height na one half de. So, one half times base na two times height na ten. So, yung area ng shear now is equal to 10 kilonewton meter. So, meron tayo negative 10 na existing and then may 10 kilonewton meter tayo na moment na existing from the shear diagram. Pwede natin ngayon isubtract. So, therefore, ang resulting shear natin ngayon is equal to 0. Ay, resulting moment natin is equal to 0. So, second degree pa rin yung slope natin. Therefore, nakuha na natin yung tamang answer for the moment diagram. So, yung problem one natin is natapos na natin at this point. So, ito dapat yung final answer nyo. Don't worry yung score natin sa diagnostic test regardless kung tama kayo or mali kayo would constitute 10 points na yun. Pero be mindful na next time yung mga seat works natin, syempre may tamang sagot na doon, Iko-consider na natin ngayon kung ano yung tama. So since diagnostic test lang ito, tinest ko lang naman kung up to what extent ba yung dapat natin i-adjust in terms of lecture. Question with regards to the first problem. Wala pa so far. Okay. So next problem tayo. Flexural stress. So, sa flexural stress, ang... Teka lang, erase muna natin. Sa flexural stress, ang importante is kailangan lang natin malaman kung ano ba yung maximum moment na induced doon sa beam natin. At the same time, uh, kailangan natin malaman kung ano ba yung centroid at moment of inertia ng figure natin. Ngayon, dito sa diagnostic test natin, ang given natin ay ano natin na? I-review natin kung ano yung given. So, sa given natin, meron tayong cross-section na rectangular uh, figure na ang base ay 80 mm and depth na 180 mm. So, drawing muna natin. So, sa flexural stress natin a problem, meron tayong figure na ang base ay 80 mm and yung height is 180 millimeters. From a standpoint, alam natin na ang flexure ay equal to ano? Ang flexure daw ay yung material, ay ang uh, resulting force natin resulting stress natin na pwede mag-induce ng failure doon sa material given na yung material natin ay may uh, modulus of elasticity or yung limit natin ng uh, strength ng material natin. So at the same time, yung flexural stress natin is equal to the moment, the maximum moment na meron tayo dito sa diagram natin multiplied by the a distance from the extreme fiber up to the neutral axis and all over the moment of inertia of the material. Ngayon, paano ba natin may intindihan yung flexure at this particular standpoint? Alam natin na meron tayong rectangular material. To determine yung flexure, kailangan natin yung value ng C. Yung C is yung uh, distance from the extreme fiber 
papunta doon sa neutral axis. So, paano ba natin nakukuha yung neutral axis? Yung neutral axis is yung uh, init section ng material natin wherein nakaka-experience siya ng zero stress. So, for, mat for a material to experience zero stress, kailangan natin mahanap ngayon yung center of gravity ng material natin which will denote the neutral axis. Kasi from the neutral axis, meron tayong uh, teka, i, ano natin? Okay. So for every material na merong center of gravity, meron tayong kinoconsider na neutral axis. Now, for this neutral axis to uh, serve its purpose, meron tayong dalawang points wherein nakakakuha tayo ng flexure. Now, depende kung ano yung magiging behavior ng structure natin. Let's say, yung structure natin is a simply supported beam. Kung simply supported beam yan na subject to a uniform load, paano ngayon yung magiging behavior ng structure natin? In what way ba magbe-bend yung beam natin kung meron tayong downward na uniformly distributed load? Magbe-bend yung beam natin according doon sa direction of force natin. Therefore, magbe-bend ngayon siya pababa. From this specific behavior, makikita natin na yung beam natin, syempre kung may figure siya, ay magiging subject to bending. Wherein, yung neutral axis natin would never change na it will still pass through the center of gravity ng material natin. Pero may dalawang specific regions na tayo na dapat tingnan. Yung dalawang specific regions na dapat nating tingnan at this time is yung compressive and tensile region. Ngayon, as we all know, kung magkakaroon ng bending na downward, yung compression natin ay nandoon sa upper side and yung tension natin ay nasa lower side. Meaning to say, kung itong diagram na to, yung kinoconsider natin for this beam, meron tayong flexure for compression and meron tayong flexure for tension. Ngayon, kung rectangular siya, meaning to say, yung force or yung stress natin, yung flexural stress natin for compression would be the same as the flexural stress for tension. But they differ in sign. Okay? So, since rectangular siya, ngayon, may mga varying na flexural stress depende doon sa magiging figure mo or depende sa magiging material uh, component mo. Ngayon, Sa problem natin, hindi pa ganong importante yung material uh, properties because wala naman tayong given pa. So, i-polish ko lang tong drawing para alam natin at some point kung ano ba yung mga dapat natin gamitin. Now, itong behavior na to na compression and tension is uh, importante kung alam natin kung paano magbasa ng behavior ng beam. Now, dito sa particular problem natin, ano ba yung behavior ng cantilever beam? Or paano ba siya magbe-bend according dito sa force natin? Let's say, yung cantilever beam natin is this one. Ngayon, yung bending ng uh, beam natin is since meron tayong pababa, na force, alam natin na pababa ngayon yung magiging uh, 
orientation ng cantilever beam natin. Ngayon, nasan dito yung part ng compression and nasan dito yung part ng tension kung ganito yung behavior natin. Given na yung beam natin is restrained, meaning to say may resisting moment ka dito na nagsusuppress nung uh, bending, so may konting exaggeration na tumataas yung beam before siya bumaba. Ngayon, tinitingnan natin sa flexure kung saan ba nagkakaroon ng deformation. Kung ang simple supported beam ay sa gitna nagkakaroon ng maximum deformation sa cantilever beam, ang maximum deformation natin ay nasa free end. Ngayon, yung behavior ng beam natin sa cantilever beam would denote na ang beam natin ay nagkakaroon ng bending with respect to the neutral axis na ang compressive part ngayon is nasa bottom part and yung tension ngayon ay nasa upper part. So makikita natin mamaya if ano ba yung denotation nitong tension and compression. Ngayon, para mahanap natin yung flexural stress, ano pa yung kailangan natin kuhanin? Yung maximum flexural stress daw na hinahanap natin would denote na ang kailangan natin kuhanin ay yung maximum moment, yung extreme distance from the neutral axis to the extreme fiber in consideration, and yung moment of inertia. Ngayon, meron tayong 80 mm by 180 mm na rectangular uh, beam. Ano yung po pwede natin kuhanin dito in terms of uh, the unknowns? Ulit, ang, ina -ano ang mga unknowns natin ay yung maximum moment, yung extreme fiber distance, and yung moment of inertia. Okay. Mula doon sa shape na 80 by 180, ano yung po pwede nating mahanap dito sa tatlo? Wala? Okay. So, ang kailangan nating hanapin dito sa figure is yung extreme fiber distance and yung moment of inertia. Ngayon, kung rectangular beam yan, hindi natin na kailangan gano hanapin kung nasaan ang centroid because alam natin for a rectangular beam, ang centroid natin ay nasa gitna. Meaning to say, yung value for C, pwede na natin madetermine agad. Yung value ng C is just equal to 180 over 2 or 90 millimeters. So mula yan doon sa neutral axis, papunta doon sa extreme fiber. Now, yung moment of inertia, paano natin kukuhanin yung moment of inertia mula dito sa rectangular beam? Ano yung formula natin para sa moment of inertia ng rectangle? Hala, nalimutan nyo ka agad. Mechanics. I assume na lahat na nandito ay pasado ng mechanics. Paano natin kinukuha yung moment of inertia ng rectangle? BH cubed. BH cubed. All over. Well, di ba? So, Moment of inertia is equal to BH cube over 12. So meron tayo 80 multiplied by 180 cube all over 12. Therefore, I is equal to ilan? 
moment of inertia is equal to meron tayo 80 times 180 cube over 12 Meron tayong 38.88 times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to the fourth power. So, meron tayong uh, moment of inertia na 38.88 times 10 raised to 6. Meron tayong extreme fiber distance na 90 mm regardless kung anong direction siya, kung tension or compression since uniform yung uh, cross-section natin. Ano na lang yung wala tayo? Para doon sa flexural stress na equal to MC over I, ano na lang yung wala tayo? Ang wala na lang tayo is yung maximum moment. Saan natin ngayon kukuhanin yung maximum moment at this point? Moment diagram po. Okay. Kukunin natin yung maximum moment doon sa moment diagram. Sa moment diagram, ang maximum moment natin ay negative 27.5 kilonewton meter na ang direction niya ay negative. Now, dito sa maximum moment, ang location ngayon ng maximum moment natin is from the support. Kasi sa cantilever beam, ang maximum shear natin ay manggagaling sa support ang maximum moment din natin will always be from the support then. So, ang maximum moment natin is 27.5 kilonewton meter or kung isasama natin yung sign, pwede mo nang isama na negative 27.5 pero this will just denote direction. Ngayon, tapos na ba tayo dito sa 27.5 kilonewton meter? Hindi pa. Bakit? kailangan natin maging consistent dito sa mga units natin. So, para ma-interpret natin siya as millimeter, ano yung po pwede natin gawin? Ang goal natin para sa flexure ay in terms of pascal or kilopascal or megapascals. Now, Pinakabagay dito na pwede natin siyang gawin into megapascal kasi alam natin na ang megapascal ay newton per square millimeter. Ang kilopascal ay kilonewton per square meter and yung pascal is newton per square meters. Or itong megapascal, syempre mega newton, e eh kaso mas okay na newton per square millimeter siya. So, Kung i-convert natin yung 27.5 kN per meter, so kailangan lang natin ng uh, 1,000 newtons over 1 kN and then 1,000 mm all over 1 meter. Yeah. So maximum moment natin is equal to 27.5 times 10 raised to 6. times 10 raised to 6 newton millimeter. Okay, so burahin ko muna itong shear moment diagram para hindi ganong kalat yung workplace natin. So, in this given figure, uh, alam na natin kung nasaan yung maximum moment. At the same time, alam natin kung ano ngayon yung magiging behavior ng maximum flexural stress natin. The location ng maximum flexural stress natin ay uh, galing doon sa support natin and at the same time meron siyang dinadenote na negative direction. Alam natin na ang pre-existing na moment diagram natin ay negative. Therefore, at some point pwede nating isolve to na negative yung moment. 
Ngayon, yung flexural stress natin, kung hindi natin alam yung behavior, pwede natin gawin na equal to MC over I. Where in your moment natin is negative 27.5 times 10 raised to 6 multiplied by C na 90 mm all over yan na natin yung mga units. Newton millimeters times 90 mm all over uh, 38.88 times 10 raised to 6 mm raised to 4. So may mm ka dito na mm squared. So itong fourth natin, squared na lang siya. Resulting flexural stress is equal to ilan? 53.6574. Palakas po, sorry. Medyo mahina yung ano yun. 63.6574. Okay. So meron tayo 63.657. Uh, Sixty-three point six five seven newton per mm squared, or equal to sixty-three point six five seven mega pascals. Now, kung meron tayong sixty-three point six five seven mega pascal na ang resulting flexure ay negative, what does this denote? Pwede natin i denote na Positive yan kapag tension, negative yan kapag compression. Therefore, kung negative yung magiging result, uh, resulting answer natin, kahit hindi natin isama yung sign. Ang kailangan lang natin sabihin na this is 67.657 megapascal in terms of compression. So, ang final na answer natin is 63.657 megapascal in terms of complexion. Tano? Anything you need to clarify for this particular problem? Any violent reaction? Wala so far? So, dito... Sa problem na to, ang kailangan nating sagot for number 2 is 63.657 megapascal in terms of compression. Ngayon, uh, check natin ngayon yung third problem. Doon sa third problem, ang kailangan natin ay yung flexural stress uh, 20 mm from the extreme fiber in compression. Wait lang Hindi ko ano eh, yung tools kasi nitong zoom. Flexural stress 20 meter from bottom fiber at a section 2 meters from the free end. So, paano natin ngayon hahanapin yan? Ngayon, yung flexural stress the 20 meters from the bottom, from free end, uh, pwede natin mahanap yan using F is equal to MC over I pa rin. Pero may mga iba tayong variations na gagawin. So from this point, alam natin na ang flexure is equal to mc over i. Yung moment of inertia would never change since alam natin na uniform ngayon yung uh, figure natin. Now, ang mag-iiba is yung maximum moment na pwede natin gamitin and yung uh, value ng c or yung value ng extreme fiber distance from the neutral axis. Ngayon, paano natin kukuhanin yung value ng C? Ngayon, may specific na sinabi yung problem wherein given yung rectangular beam ulit natin na 80 by 180, at the same time, alam natin na ang neutral axis ay nasa gitna. From the neutral axis daw, or from the bottom fiber, so titignan natin kung nasaan yung bottom fiber, 
meron tayong hinahanap na flexural stress 20 meters from the bottom, 20 mm rather, from the bottom fiber. Ibig sabihin, kung 20 mm from the bottom fiber yan, ano yung value ng C? Okay. Base lang sa observation, meron tayong uh, neutral axis sa nasa gitna ng rectangular beam. Meaning to say, at both sides, meron tayong 90 mm. Diba? Tapos, yung extreme fiber daw na hinahanapan natin ng flexural stress ay 20, 20 millimeters from the bottom fiber. Meaning to say, Yung hinahanapan natin ng flexural stress, ang hinahanap natin na distance is 70 millimeters. Therefore, yung value ng C would be equal to 70 millimeters from the bottom. Okay? Ngayon, pero na tayong given a value ng C. Burn natin. Meron tayong uh, value ng C na equal to 70 mm. Paano ngayon natin kukuhanan yung moment? Since ang kailangan daw natin, alam, ibang ko muna yung kulay. Yan. So ang kailangan daw natin doon sa problem is kailangan natin ma-determine yung flexural stress na 20 mm from the bottom fiber at section 2 meters from free end. So ang free end natin ay or ang span natin ay 3 meters na meron ulit na uh, uniformly distributed load na 5 kN per meter and then meron tayo 5 kN na concentrated load na may 1 meter and 2 meters sa distance. So hinahanapan daw natin ay yung section 2 meters from free end. So from free end, from free end, uusog tayo na 2 meters. Therefore, ang hinahanapan natin is this point. Let's say point C. And then, yan natin. May ginagamit na tayong C. Eh. Let's say point D. Ngayon. Kanina sa shear and moment diagram natin, kung maaalala ninyo, ang, ang moment diagram natin goes like this. Meron tayong 27.5, meron tayong 10, a negative, and then 0. ba? Earlier, doon sa second problem, ginamit natin yung moment na negative 27.5. Now, in this problem, ano yung gagamitin nating moment? Ang hinahanapan daw natin ng flexural stress is yung section 2 meters from the free end. So, 2 meters from the free end, ano yung moment na present doon? In careful observation dito sa moment diagram, ano yung moment na kinoconsider natin 2 meters from free end? Yung negative 10 po. Yung negative 10. So meaning to say, ang gagamitin natin na maximum moment for this uh, particular problem is equal to 10, negative 10 kilonewton meter or 10 times 10 raised to 6 newton millimeters. So, meron pa ba tayong kulang in terms of flexure? Meron na tayong moment of inertia, meron na tayong fiber distance, and meron na tayong moment. May kulang pa ba sa flexure? Wala na po. Wala na. So, kung wala na tayong kulang doon, pwede na natin isolve yung flexure. Where in flexure is equal to 10 times 10 raised to 6 multiplied by 70 all over 38.88 times 10 raised to 6. Flexural stress now is equal to ano? Yeah. 
So, meron tayong 18.004 mega pascal. Ano ngayon yung convention, yung sign convention natin dito? Is it, or yung uh, orientation ng flexor? Is it tension or compression? Okay. Compression po. Compression. So, final answer natin is 18.004 megapascal in terms of compression. So, yun ngayon yung final answer for the flexural stress. At number, ay, at problem number 2. Tano? Sir, papano po kung halimbawang irregular yung shape no din natin? Ngayon, kung irregular yung shape ng beam natin, ang kailangan ngayon natin hanapin, let's say ganito yung shape ng beam natin. Yung shape ng beam natin at this point is kailangan ng neutral axis. Wala na siya sa gitna. Ang kailangan nyo ngayon hanapin is yung centroid ng figure. So let's say yung hanapin natin dito ay Y bar. Yan. So yung centroid, ano natin, at some point, re-reviewin nyo pa rin yung centroid mula doon sa mechanics niyo. Okay? Tanong pa? Anything under the sun? Kung may tanong kayo with regards to mga subjects natin na related dito sa RCD, pwede na yung magtanong. Kailangan ko kasing i-explain to para kahit pa paano makapag-start tayo ng lecture na uh, may idea na tayo kung paano ba nagkakaroon ng uh, ganitong klaseng answers, kung ano ba yung dapat natin i-take note, kung compression or tension, or kung paano ba yung mga behavior ng uh, structures. Ano? Wala? Sure? Okay. So kung wala kayong tanong, yan. So before natin i-end itong lecture, uh, bibigyan ako ng reading assignment. Ang reading assignment natin ay um, chapter 1 ng Structural Analysis by R.C. Hibler and section 401 to 405 ng 2015 version ng NSEP. Ngayon, Itong mga reading assignment, isasend ko sa mga class mayor yung Google Drive natin para makita nyo kung nasaan itong mga librong to And then, please, uh, download the books and then read. Okay? So, next week, ang, ang lecture natin is uh, asynchronous since uh, mga underlying concepts lang naman yung i-explain natin ko baga para history na concrete as a material or uh, yung mga... Uh, mga material standpoint or guidelines lang naman. Yung mga solving natin ang gagawin natin synchronous para at some point um, yung mga tanong na pwede natin maisip at the moment ay pwede natin gawin. Okay? Questions? Wala na? Okay, so kung wala na tayong tanong, so uh, let's dismiss this class and uh, ingat po tayo lang. Eh. Thank you so much. Thank you, po, sir. Thank you po, sir. Thank you po, sir. Thank you po. Thank you po, sir.